All right, welcome back everyone to Self Principle. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi. Now, today's video is dedicated to all you chocolate lovers out there. I'm talking to all of you guys who especially love your dark chocolate happen to be one of them. I always look for the percentage of cocoa in there. I actually don't mind that dark chocolate is a little bit bitter. I like it that way. But today's topic is all about cocoa flavanols and heart disease and what's the latest data. But before we dive into it, let's take a step back and understand what flavanols really are. Flavanols are part of a family of flavonoids. So flavonoids are these naturally occurring compounds found in plants. They're found in tea, grapes, wine, berries, and all sorts of other things going on. And flavonoids have six subtypes. And those six subtypes are flavonols, which is what we're going to talk about today, flavin 3 all, flavones, flavonones, isoflavones, and anthocyanins. Whew, that's a lot of big words. You don't have to remember all those big words. We're going to present all sorts of data in the future videos. There's already a ton of videos I've done where I've talked about all of the benefits of different types of flavonoids going on. But just understand that flavonoids can help to regulate cell activity and they really help to fight those free radicals. Those are those things floating around that really cause us to have inflammation and aging going on. Now, cocoa flavonols, of course, they come from cocoa beans. Most people link them to chocolate going on. But what's the latest data around them and what should you know? So there's a new study in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. It's part of the COSMOS trial. COSMOS was Cocoa Supplement and Multivitamin Outcome Study. You know, people actually get paid a lot of money to come up with these uh, acronyms for studies going on. So the reason I really like the study is this is a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial at about 21,442 U.S. adults. And they followed these participants on average about 3.6 years. Now, there were four groups. So one group participants, they received 500 milligrams of cocoa flavonols. Another group received a multivitamin. Another group received neither and they got a placebo. And the final group received both cocoa flavonols and a multivitamin. So what did they find? So the first thing was they found that cocoa flavonols group had a reduction in total cardiovascular events by about 10%. But here's the kicker. Even though the 10% sounds good, it did not reach statistical significance. There was a trend towards it. It just didn't quite make it. However, what was statistically significant was that the cocoa flavonol group had a 27% lower risk of cardiovascular death. And what they saw was that the benefits for cocoa flavonols, they started to occur at around two years of supplementation. So in other words, taking this stuff for one week, two weeks may have benefit, but they didn't really see that in data. It was really over years, specifically two years. Now, the part that really was impressive and important was that the next thing they did was they looked at compliance rates, meaning how many of these people were really sticking to taking their cocoa flavonols regularly. So what they said was, well, what was these rates of cardiovascular events and cardiovascular death in patients who were taking these cocoa flavonols for more than 75% of the time? And what they found was that there was a 15% reduction in total cardiovascular events and a 39% reduction in death from cardiovascular disease. So in other words, it was a much stronger result in people who were compliant with taking their cocoa flavonols. Now you can get cocoa as a powder and you can make sure it's organic and so forth. You can mix it in things. I mix it in with my smoothie. It tastes wonderful going on, but there's many ways to do it. If you eat dark chocolate, you can do that. But really, if you're eating more plants, that's probably the ideal way to make sure you're getting cocoa in your diet going on. So take home from today is, Eat more plants, live a healthy life, move more, sleep more, practice gratitude and kindness, right? And as you're thinking about cocoa, just remember, it can actually be helpful. There's some really interesting data out there. You don't have to go out of your way to get a supplement. You can get it from food going on. And if you enjoy the chocolate, this may not be a bad idea to make sure it's higher in cocoa. As always, if you got a question, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time.